Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first regular season episode of the 2024 season of The Walkthrough. Uh, you're here with me, Jamie Hoyle, as always. And this week, I have a special guest. We have Dennis Ackerman from the Believe in Raiders podcast. Uh, Dennis was with us once towards the end of last season, right before that Chargers-Raiders game we'd all like to forget, or at least on the Chargers side anyway. <laughs> and uh, a, lot of, a lot has happened for both teams since then, both in the front office, on the field, a lot of decisions being made. So um, first of all, Dennis, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate you coming on. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, I got a question for you. I saw in, in your montage, so many great chargers over the year. Do you have a favorite uh, San Diego slash LA charger player? I would say it comes down to two guys for me. Uh, it comes down to Rivers and Seau. Um, oh, okay. Seau was the charger when I was growing up. So he's the one that really got me into the game. And then Rivers was the quarterback for more than half of my fandom, I think. So uh, those are the two guys for me. Where's LT rank in there? Uh, I'd say LT is a close third. Okay. Yeah. They're, I mean, they're all great. You can't go wrong with either one of them. No. Um, but it's more based on what I grew up on than anything else for me. Um, so what I wanted to start with was, and you kind of, you kind of teed me up for this when we were talking before we went on the air, talking about, um, you know, that, was it 60, 60, 62 to 21, 63, 21? One of those two, right. The Raiders yeah. were in the low 60s, I know that, which yes. I've never seen before. Yes. Yeah, it was 63, 21 uh, in week 15 of last season. And we came on and we talked about, you know, where's Harbaugh going to land? Is he going to go to the Chargers? Is he going to go to the Raiders? What do we expect from these teams with so little to play for at the end of the season? And I think what kind of stood out to me was, you know, you mentioned it, the Chargers quit in that game. I mean, I think you could point up and down the roster and with the exception of maybe four or five guys at the absolute most, everybody quit on that game in the first quarter. It was, they were just done. And, you know, you made the point they quit on Brandon Staley, but I thought what was interesting was Tom Telesco built that roster and he went with, St with Staley. They were both fired that next week. And I'm just curious what the, what the uh, response was from Raiders fans to be bringing in a general manager who they ridiculed for 11 years and said that he was overrated and the charters were overrated and he built a bad roster to watch the team quit on him and on Staley. What was the, what was the response to bringing him in? What, how did they, how did they, how did they take that? Well, I think they, they were trying to be open-minded about it. And I think he did pretty good in terms of free agency when they signed Christian Wilkins, uh, from Miami, they inked into a big deal, and it was like, wow, all of a sudden, this is one of the bigger free agent prizes on the market, and the Raiders grabbed him, and I think it was high reviews for Tom Delesco at that point. I think there was a little bit of a, wow, when they took Brock Bowers uh, with their first pick, I think it was the 13th overall pick, I thought everybody thought they were either going to go uh, perhaps a cornerback or maybe somebody along the defensive line, perhaps an offensive lineman, but they decided to go uh, with Brock Bowers, the tight end out of Georgia, because they could not trade up. They tried to trade up. Well, I know Telesco doesn't like to trade up. He's got a reputation for not doing that, but they tried to trade up and get a quarterback. They were unsuccessful, so they went out and they signed Gardner Minshew, uh, and that was kind of the, I don't know what I'm going to say, consolation prize, but that was pretty much all they uh, could do at that point was a Gardner Minshew. So there went with Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell. I think the jury's kind of still out. I think he's building a roster. I think he's got some good pieces in place. Uh, some areas they lack some depth. So I think, you know what, right now, Telesco does come. I know it comes from the rival, but he does have a lot of experience. And let's face it, the Chargers have won more recently than the Raiders have. So the only really way <laughs> they can go is up. So 
I think people are keeping an open mind. I know they were a little upset after preseason watching Gar uh, Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell uh, compete for the starting quarterback job. They're like, why didn't we trade up? Why didn't we trade up? Well, you know what, Raider Nation, it's not that easy just to trade up. You can't just do it like snap your fingers and somebody else is going to you know, give you nothing to trade up eight, nine spots, whatever it might be. So book is still open on him. I think he's done some good things, but obviously it's a result-oriented league. So let's see how the Raiders do here in 2024. Yeah, I was always fascinated by the reputation that Telesco had because I think he had four seasons with nine or more wins in 11 years. He had more seasons with five or more losses than he did with nine or more wins as a Charger, and yet he gets lauded as one of the best general managers in the league, and he builds these great rosters. And when you really drill down, his rosters are usually top-heavy, and there's no depth. So as soon as the top two guys get hurt, they're in big trouble. And I guess you can say that about a lot of teams, but it's really true. Of, it's been true of the Chargers during Telesco's uh, time as the general manager. So you kind of teed me up for another one. It's almost like we're on the same wavelength here. I love it. Uh, I wanted to go into the quarterback talk. Uh, you mentioned Aiden O'Connell. You mentioned Gardner Minshew. Um, I watched a little bit of the Raiders preseason. Not much, not super close, but I saw some clips here and there. What, can you tell me a little bit about – how that quarterback competition went, why Minshew was selected as the starter. And do you think he's going to last as the starter over the course of the season? Well, here's what I think that Tom Telesco, uh, head coach Antonio Pierce did, and uh, Luke Getzey, their offensive coordinator, that they took the whole body of work. I'm talking OTAs, training camp, and then the preseason games. And that's what they made their decision on that body of work. But if you just took what the two quarterbacks did in preseason, Aiden O'Connell clearly outplayed Gardner Minshew. He had much better numbers. Uh, he looked more comfortable in the pocket. He moved the offense where Gardner Minshew seemed very uncomfortable. He left the pocket a lot. He was late on throws. He missed a lot of open receivers. So if Jamie, if you're just looking at the eyeball tests from the preseason, yeah, I think a lot of uh, people, a lot of Raider fans thought it was going to be Aiden O'Connell. Instead they went with Gardner Minshew. Some of it I think plays into the fact that, okay, he's, uh, entering his sixth year, he is on his fourth team, but they also they didn't pay him outrageous money. But two years, twenty five million that's that's starter money. So I think they're looking at okay, we paid this guy. Um, I still don't know if what they know they have in Aiden O'Connell. I think there's still some upside, and that's why I thought he was going to be the starter. Because if I look at this Raider team right now, is it a Super Bowl contender? No way. Is it a playoff contender? Maybe if everything broke right, they might squeak in at nine and eight, you know, maybe 10 and seven, I don't know, nine and eight. But I'm thinking if I don't know the potential in Aiden O'Connell, I kind of already know what I have in Gardner Minshew. Yes, he can extend plays. Um, you know, he's got a gunslinger mentality. I think I want to see what I have in Aiden O'Connell moving forward. Now, could they get off to a slow start and then could everything blow up? <coughs> and always so much talk, Jamie, about, oh, moving Devontae Adams. If the Raiders get off this slow start, get him off the books. But, look, I think they should have went with Aiden O'Connell. They didn't. I thought he looked better. Luke Getz, he's, he's the first-year offensive coordinator. He came over from the Chicago Bears. To me, O'Connell looked better. Do I think both quarterbacks will play this season? Absolutely. I do. I don't. It's it's a war of attrition now. We're 17 games. We're playing 17, soon to be 18. It's just a matter of uh, not if, but when. And I, I don't think that Gardner Minshew, the way he plays, makes it through a season. I th definitely think we see both quarterbacks – how much? I'm not sure, but two quarterbacks definitely playing this year for the Raiders. Absolutely. Do you think the decision to go with the veteran was kind of a, I don't want to say consolation, but kind of a, I don't know, a way of making up for a, a relatively inexperienced head coach? Okay, we're going to insert the veteran quarterback. We're going to give the younger guy some time. Let's see what the veteran can do while we develop the kid in the background. Do you think that had anything yeah. to do with it? Yeah, I do. I do. My uh, On the Believe in Raiders podcast, I do with Stanford route. He says, Dennis, he goes, Antonio Pierce is a defensive minded coach. He's going to go with somebody who has a little bit more experience. He knows what he has in Gardner Minshew. Uh, he's going to hope he's not going to make mistakes because coaches, defensive coaches tend to be more conservative. I know a little bit of opposite of what Gardner is more of a gunslinger, but I think he wants somebody who knows what he's getting into. Now, he did have a dress rehearsal last year with Aiden O'Connell. But like I said, I just don't think we know what the ceiling is on Aiden O'Connell. I know one game last year, the Christmas day game against the chiefs of the Raiders won Aiden O'Connell didn't complete a pass after the first quarter and the Raiders still won that game, but he also had other games where he looked very good. I thought he looked outstanding against uh, the chargers in that Thursday night game. You and I talked about early. Um, so 
you know, O'Connell was up and down. I know Gardner Minshew is more of the sure thing, I guess you want, if you want to call it that, the sure thing. So I think with Pierce went with, you know what, I'm an experience. I'm a first year offensive coordinator. Let me go with somebody who's played six years in the league and we'll see what the results are. Yeah, that makes sense. Kind of stabilize things a little bit while you're developing O'Connell in the background. Um, <clears throat> let's move on to um, Antonio Pierce. Um, going into his first full season as a head coach, he he was the head coach for what, eight, nine games last year? Nine games. I went five and four. Nine games. Okay. So they go five and four. The players loved him. They responded really well to him. Uh, they go out on a coaching search. They decide to hire the inexperienced head coach as opposed to going out and hiring like a Jim Harbaugh or somebody who's got a, who's a little bit more established. What do you think Pierce learned from the first year that he can take into year two to help make the team better? And where do you think he still has room for growth as they're trying to, you know, mold this team into a playoff contender? Well, one good thing that I think he's done, he's surrounded himself with a lot of former head coaches. Uh, he's got uh, Marvin Lewis, the Bengals head coach for about 15 seasons. He is on the staff. Um, uh, Tom Coughlin, he's an advisor. Obviously, Antonio Pierce won a Super Bowl with the Giants when Tom Coughlin is the head coach. So I think Antonio realizes, hey, these are the things I don't know running, you know, for the first time as a head coach compared to an interim. And I think he's leaning on those guys. Hey, this is what I'm thinking. Do you think it's going to work? Or, this might not work. So I think he's relying on experience uh, from his past. And I think that's going to be a big help for him. I think game management, he, he showed last year at times, he's still learning that even in the preseason. I think there was a, some questionable things with his game management. But look, the only way he's going to get better at that is game experience. And hopefully that is something that'll improve. So I think in terms of managing the game, that's where he still needs to have some improvement. Um, look, I think the defense – after he took over, the defense was number one in the NFL uh, points allowed. So that's a good thing. Obviously, he's got the defensive background. And then I think they're just offense. The offense is the big question mark, whether it's running back, quarterback, or the right side of that offensive line, what kind of production they're going to get. And that's going to determine whether this team is 7-10, and 8-9, and nine, or 9-8, nine and eight, perhaps. So that kind of leads me into my next question, which was um, on offense – can you name maybe two or three players, either skill players or offensive linemen or what have you, who you think really need to step up for the Raiders to take that next step and maybe make a push for the playoffs? All right, let's take quarterback out of the equation because we already talked about that. They've got running back Zamir White, and he takes over for Josh Jacobs, who left via free agency. He had, took the money and uh, headed to Green Bay. Now, White had a dress rehearsal last year. He started the final four games of the season, and he averaged over 100 yards rushing. And I kind of – Jamie, I can kind of see people, the outside people saying like, oh my gosh, you're starting this guy Samir White at running back. And then you've got Gardner Minshew as your starting quarterback. I'm like, how does that equate to any victory? So uh, look, uh, Zamir White, I thought, performed well when he was given the opportunity. They're going to really need him because, you know what, maybe they're going to run a lot of play action pass. They're definitely going to go a lot of 12 formation with the one, one running back and two tight ends because – if you've got a position group that is the strength of this team, it is the tight end position. You've got Brock Bowers. We mentioned him earlier, the rookie from Georgia. They're very high on him. They can line him up as a tight end. They can line him up as a wide receiver. And then last year, their second-round pick out of Notre Dame, Michael Mayer. Those two, if you just put them together with potential, is the best position group on this football team. So I think you're going to see a lot of 12 formation on the offense with those two. Um the, off the offensive line, the right side, you've got Jackson Powers Booth, uh, Jackson Powers J uh, Johnson, beg your pardon, out of Oregon. Now he missed uh, all of training camp with a concussion. They had him penciled in as the starting right guard. Now he's not going to uh, get the start in the opener against the Chargers. Hopefully maybe week three, week four, he'll be up to speed and they can pencil him in at the guard position. And they still haven't made a decision at right tackle. So when you're talking tight end, when you're talking offensive line and you're talking running back, those are the positions well, you really need to look at this team. And if they meet their potential, then, yeah, maybe nine wins is possible. If they don't, six, seven uh, could be staring them right in the face. Those are the, I would say, excluding the quarterback, those are the positions to watch for the Raiders here in 2024. Uh, there was one name that kind of stood out to me while I was watching the preseason, and I'm curious if you can tell us a little bit about him, and that's the wide receiver, Trey Tucker. It seemed like he was heavily involved in special teams, making splash plays down the field as a wide receiver. I think I even saw him take a couple of reverses during the preseason. So why don't you tell us a little bit about him and how he might help transform this offense? 
Yeah, the Raiders were very high on him last year. They uh, touted him a rookie coming out of Cincinnati. They talked him up. Uh, he had struggled a little bit. He had a lot of drop passes. I believe he had less than 20 catches. Uh, Jamie, I think you can make the case. He was probably their best player in preseason. He had a lot of big grabs. They're counting on him to be the number three receiver behind Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers. They need him to step up, and he can be that deep ball threat. Myers and Adams are better at work in the middle of the field and the outside, but Tucker can be that big threat for him. So I agree with you. I think he's someone that they're counting on to have a big season. They need a big season out of him as that number three wide receiver. He seems to uh, have gotten over the drops or whatever you want to say, but he looked very good to me as well in preseason. We talked about him on the, our podcast as well that, you know, they talked him up last year. They've been talking him up in training camp. Now it's time to do it on the field and let's see how we can produce. Um, hoping for big things from him, number 11, uh, here in this uh, upcoming season. So just kind of looking over the the, uh, the Raiders roster, it, obviously they're, they're kind of stacked along the defensive line. You've got Crosby there. Um, Koontz had a big year last year. Seems like he's on the upswing. Um, what about Tyree Wilson, the first round pick from last year? How is he doing? Did, was he on the verge of being cut this year? And what are the expectations for him? Well, they said he's taking baby steps in training camp, which, you know what, you were a first round pick, a top 10 pick a year ago. You don't want to hear about somebody who was taking baby steps. He missed most of training camp last year and they had him on the edge. They had him playing inside. He, you know, he had a little bit of production towards the end of the season. But like I said, I mean, this guy's a first, you know, top 10 pick. And he's struggling. I mean, he made the roster. There's debate whether he's going to play on the end, in the middle. He'll perhaps play both. He's not going to start on the end ahead of uh, Max Crosby or uh, Malcolm Koontz. He'll be a backup there, and he'll be a backup uh, inside as well. But if you take somebody that high, Jamie, you don't want him to be a backup. He's supposed to be a starter and making an impact. But it's just another one of those cases, it seems like, that you know what the Raiders, uh, once again, have whiffed on their first round pick. Now he's only in his second year, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but uh, did not get a lot of production out of him in 2023 and hoping for not baby steps, but some big incremental steps here so he can be an impact player on that defense, whether it's on the edge or whether it's inside for the Silver and Blacks defense. Yeah, that sounds like a familiar story. We've had a lot of those same conversations about Quinton Johnston uh, this, this off season. Um, he was taking steps during the training camp a lot of you know circus acrobatic catches, big plays in training camp, um, and a lot of time off on the side catching balls off the jugs machine after practices and things like that. So Chargers fans are really looking for him to step forward, but kind of the same boat of he really didn't do much of anything last year after being a first-round pick. And now we're just looking for, like you said, baby steps. We're looking for him to make some kind of stride to show that he's going to you know hang on, not just hang on, but earn some significant snaps and make some plays in this offense because the Chargers are going to need that big playability down the field at some point. And I think they're they're going to look to Johnston to do that. Jamie, I'm, I'm curious. One thing I'm definitely going to be watching for on Sunday is, you know, Jim Harbaugh is kind of a ground and pound type of coach where Justin Herbert's used to going back there, flinging it 30, 35, 40 times a game. How is that? What kind of adjustment is that going to be from Justin? Is he is he buying into Harbaugh's style? Do you think? It seems like he is. I mean, he's had nothing but positive things to say, um, and, and that goes both ways. Harbaugh's been singing his praises. Roman's been singing his praises. So I I think he he probably welcomes taking some of that pressure off of himself. Not that he doesn't want the ball in his hands in big moments, but they need to be more than just a one dimensional passing team. Um, they have to be able to run the ball to be successful, particularly to close out games. That's been a big issue for them forever. Um, really, since LT retired, they've had a really hard time closing out games uh, with the running game. So um, I think he welcomes that change. I think he understands that if they're able to run the ball effectively, it's going to open up the intermediate and deep parts of the field for the passing game off of play action. So all that stuff, you know, Brandon Staley always talked about marrying the running game and the passing game. They never really did that. I feel like with the way Roman and Harbaugh run their offense, they're going to have a better shot of marrying the passing game and the running game by setting up more play action shots with a ground and pound heavy offense. They're, they're going to look to batter people. Um, and I think that's, that's what they need at this point. It'll be interesting because I know Harbaugh likes his strength is usually his offensive line and right now on the Raiders. That defensive front is their strength right now. The linebackers are good. The corners uh, there's no depth with their ever, and they're good on the back end at the safety. So it'll be interesting. The line of scrimmage 
uh, when the Chargers have the ball and the Raiders are on defense, it'll be something fun to watch, I think. Yeah, it should be really interesting, especially if uh, Max Crosby is lining up to the offensive right side where Joe Alt is to see how Alt's settling in at the right tackle position, a position that's new to him, um, and how is he going to handle dealing with you know a top tier elite level pass rusher right away um you know there's no there's no slow welcomes in the nfl you go right into the fire the the fire pit and your feet to the fire and you, you got to go so it'll be a good test for for all i do think the chargers offensive line is going to be better this year it seems like they're a little bit more cohesive and i feel like um greg roman does a really good job of teaching what he wants along the offensive line. They just, he's always had success with offensive lines everywhere he's been. And I think that'll continue. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but I, I do think the offensive line is going to be better. Hopefully it's more organized and more prepared for some of those stunts and twists and overload blitzes that gave them so many issues last year. Well, that all's a big boy. I mean, talking about passing the eye test. Oh man. He is. He's a monster. <laughs> he needs to build an offensive lineman, doesn't he? Wow. He does. Yeah. He's what, 6'9, 340 or something along those lines. He's a big boy and he moves like a tight end. He can really move. So, um, one of the things that I think we'll see a lot of this year is the Chargers running behind the left side with Trey Pipkins and all pulling from the right side to clear the way. Uh, they had a lot of success with that in the preseason. And I think that'll continue. I think that'll be kind of their identity in the running game, at least early on. So what are the expectations for the Raiders defense? I know you mentioned, you know, they, they were number one in the league after Pierce took over last year. What are you expecting going into this year from that group? It's not, it's not what you would call a star laden group outside of Max Crosby. Um, so what are the expectations? Well, I think that, like I said, they led the uh, NFL in points allowed once Pierce took over. And I think there's even higher expectations once they signed Wilkins in the offseason. So they have a really good uh, up front. They're very solid at linebacker. They got Divine Diablo uh, along with Robert Spillane, who's in his second year now with the Raiders. He uh, performed much better than expectations. They were talked about him being great in the run game, but he was also very good in the pass game. I think corner is probably the biggest concern, Jamie. They got a great nickelback in, in Nate Hobbs and then Jack Jones, who came over late in the season, who had that one-handed pick against the Chargers. Sorry, I don't mean to rub that in, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that people, that's how people are going to remember him. He's a very, very good corner. Uh, the other corner is the big question mark. They might go with Jacorian Bennett. He's in his second season. He had an up-and-down rookie campaign a year ago, uh, and then there's not a lot of depth behind that. So uh, signed Holmes. Uh, late, he used to be with uh, with the Giants, so he knows uh, Patrick Graham's uh, defensive scheme. But if you're signing somebody this late in the season, I mean, how much of an impact are they going to really make? They're they're available for a reason this late in the year before <laughs> you know the you know the season's going to get underway. So I think corner is the big issue uh, with this team, but they're really good on the back end with Epps uh, and Trayvon Merrick. So it's just the corners are the uh, are the big concern. They get after the quarterback well, as you know, with uh, Malcolm Kuntz on one end and then you've got Crosby coming on the other end. So we'll have to wait and see, but I think expectations that, you know, this should be at least hopefully a top five defense. They did struggle a little bit against the run in preseason. And last year, I think they were 21st overall. So that could be another concern. Also, hopefully the preseason was just an aberration, but they didn't play particularly well against the run last year or in preseason. So we'll have to wait and see how that plays out here. So how would you attack the defense if you were an offensive coordinator? You know what? I would probably try to do, uh, and this kind of plays into the Chargers, I would probably try to pound it uh, on the ground, see what I can get maybe on first or second down, then set that up, and then I would try to hit him a play-action pass. Uh, that's the way I would do it because, like I said, they finished 21st against the run. Um, they struggled in the preseason. They really did. I mean, I know a lot of – and the Raiders were playing their number ones. They played them all three games, which was very surprising. They played them against Minnesota. They played them against Dallas. And they played them against San Francisco, so there wasn't it wasn't like they were out there uh, throwing their twos and threes on the field and saying, you know, this is what we want to see. No, they played their ones uh, quite a bit, and they did struggle. So I would, uh, you know, I would pound it, pound it, and pound it, and then go play action pass and see what you can get. And that's the way I would attack the Raiders' defense. I really would. So uh, Brandon Staley's defense was pretty vanilla. They didn't blitz a whole lot. They kind of relied on the front four to get to the quarterback. I think this year uh, they're going to be much more aggressive on defense. We even saw it in the preseason, a lot of slot blitzes, 
a lot of overload blitzes. How do you think the Raiders offensive line is equipped to handle those types of uh, tactics and schemes? On the left side of the line, they're good. Colton Miller uh, is the veteran on that group. Now, he missed a lot of time last year with a shoulder injury. He's been slow to recover from that. He is going to be available uh, for the opener. He's solid at left tackle, and you've got uh, Dylan Parham at left guard and then Andre James. Those three, I feel very comfortable with being able to pick or handle stuff like that. It's the right side where I'm concerned because they they don't know if it's going to be Thayer Munford or DJ Glaze, the rookie out of Maryland, who's going to be uh, the starting right tackle and the starting right guard is, uh, I think, going to be a game time decision who they end up going with. So the right side of the line is what concerns me. The left side, I feel very comfortable with. And I think if you ask most Raider fans, they feel the same way. It's just on that right side. How are those two going to be? What's it going to be like? Is, you know, Gardner Minshew going to be back there running for his life? I mean, we know we can scramble. We can know we can extend plays, but you don't want the guy running for his life 30, 40 times. You know, you want to have a clean pocket for him. And at the time, the Raiders offensive line a year ago, which was one of their weaknesses uh, did not do a good job of protecting whoever the quarterback uh, was at that, whether it was Jimmy Garoppolo or Aiden O'Connell uh, or Brian Hoyer. They really didn't do a good job. So we'll see. That's one of the things for the Raiders that I'm definitely keeping an eye on through these first handful of games is how is that offensive line, particularly on the right side. Now, if Minshew can get some time, I mean, like I said, he's got the weapons. Devontae Adams, I'll still say he's a top 10 wide receiver, maybe not top five, but he's definitely still – a top 10. Uh, Jacoby Myers had a very solid season in his first year with the Raiders after coming over from the New England uh, Patriots via free agency. And like I said, with Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer, in terms of potential, those two are off the charts. And Zamir White, I still, you know, what he did in the final four games, if that can carry over, yeah, the pieces are in place. They might not be household names, Jamie, like everybody's going to know, like, you know, the Justin Herbert or Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, you know, those guys in the division, the Chiefs are the Chiefs. And that's another story. But, you know, they've got some weapons. If everybody, if everything goes right, they've got pieces in place. But we'll see. You don't win on potential, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got to execute. You got to get it done on the field, right? You do. You have any questions for me? Yeah. What, let me ask you this. I mean, they won five games a year ago, the Chargers. They finished five and 12, obviously. They cleaned house. They did everything they possibly could. Uh, to get Harbaugh, they got their man. He comes in. He's a very raw, raw. Let's go. He's turned. I mean, he turned Stanford around in a heartbeat. You know, in the San Francisco 49ers, they went from below 500 to the NFC Championship game in his first year there with San Francisco. Do you think that he can work that magic again with the Chargers in this first season there? And uh, AFC Championship game, I would say probably not. I think they're going to be better. I think they're going to execute better. Uh, there are some positions where I think depth is a bit of an issue, where if they have an injury or two, they're going to be in pretty big trouble. Uh, and I think there are some some er some position groups where we just don't really know what to expect. Um, the linebackers played well in the preseason, but if you look at that group on paper, it's not a great group. Uh, their defensive back group, they, they kind of lump their corners and safeties into one defensive back group. You look at that group on paper outside of Derwin and maybe Alohi Gilman, there aren't a lot of people on that roster that, that fans outside of the charters are going to recognize. It's, it's just, it's a lot of guys who are still trying to prove themselves at the NFL level. So an injury here, an injury there, uh, some confusion, uh, Christian Fulton also came over from the Titans and he's looked pretty good in camp, but I think, um, you're probably looking at maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 wins. Maybe if everything breaks right, maybe 11, but that seems like it's pushing it. Um, I don't think they're going to kill themselves with stupid penalties anymore. I don't think they're going to kill themselves by just not executing and getting things done on the field. Uh, I think what's going to catch up to them is they're still building this roster in Harbaugh's eye. And I don't think it's where it needs to be yet. And I think that catches up with them at some point against better teams. Um, but I do think they're going to be very physical. I think they're going to play from bell to bell. Um, and I think they're going to really challenge people um, with their running game, with the way they're going to be aggressive on defense. They're going to batter some people and they might, they might, you might be surprised what you see from them because they've always had a reputation for being soft. And I don't really think we're going to see that with a Jim Harbaugh led team. All right, Jamie, let me ask you this. With Brandon Staley, he relied so much on analytics. And, I mean, they made a lot of head-scratching decisions. He did, I should say, in terms of going for it on fourth down from whatever position on the field. Are those days done with Harbaugh, do you think? 
I think Harbaugh is a pretty old school guy. I think he's going to have to be in basically an ideal situation to go for it on fourth and short. You know, I think you're talking about being maybe inside the opponent's 30 yard line in a close and late game where you got to get points. I don't think he's going to be, he definitely won't be as cavalier as, as Staley was going for it on his side of the, of the 50 uh, going for, you know, fake punts and, and things like that deep in their own territory. I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but I think situationally Harbaugh will do it when, when he feels like he needs to, I just don't think it'll be as frequent as it was with Staley. All right. I think we can agree. It's the chiefs division again, one more time. I don't think the I don't think the chargers, the Raiders are in Denver. Definitely not going to challenge uh, Kansas city. I think it's a foregone conclusion on this. They are hit with a bunch of injuries or something unexpected happens to the Kansas city chiefs. I think we could say the division is theirs. Uh, is the battle for second place, do you think, then, in the AFC West between the – I think the Raiders and the Chargers are better than the Broncos unless Bo Nix plays uh, better than out the of, Out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't you think it's pretty much between the Raiders and the Chargers for second in the division? Yeah, I think those two are going to be battling it out, and I think the team that wins three or more games in the conference or in the division winds up winning, taking second place. That's my guess. The Chargers have had a really hard time – finishing and winning games within the division uh, in recent years, games that it seems like they had put away, they find a way to lose them constantly. So um, I think success within the division is going to be paramount for both these teams. And I definitely do think you're, you're looking at those two teams battling it out for second place in the division. I just, I don't think Denver's going to be very good. No, I don't either. Nothing like consolation prize second to <laughs> second place in the <laughs> US for Earth. I don't know how many years now, but Kansas, as long as, long as Mahomes and Kelsey and, and Andy Reid are there, I think it's it's the Chiefs division until somebody knocks them off, uh, you know, that pedestal. And I don't know when that's going to be. I really don't. Yeah, you got to prove you can do it, and nobody's proved that yet. So no. <laughs> until until somebody proves otherwise, it's their division to win. Agreed, one hundred percent. All right, you have anything else for me? I think that's it, man. I'm looking forward to getting uh, the NFL season underway. Of course, it's. Raiders and the Chargers, always a great rivalry. And I, looking for the Raiders, I don't think this could be a worse opener. Jim Harbaugh in his first game, I know the place will be buzzing. I know the Chargers will be sky high with their new coach. And, uh, man, have you seen their – I mean, look, I know you're San Diego. Sorry, but that new practice facility that they've got in El Segundo is is off the charts. They did a wonderful job. The Spanos has actually opened up their wallets and and did something right for once. Yeah, I went up there this summer. It's It's a beautiful facility. It's, it's really nice. My only complaint was when I was up there for practice, they practiced as far away from the bleachers as they possibly could. So it was really hard to see what was going on. But other than that, it looked really nice. And uh, one of my co-hosts actually got a tour of the facility um, back in May, I think. And he said it was amazing. Yeah. They did a nice job with that. So we'll see on Sunday how uh, what kind of improvement both these teams have made. Yes, we will. So, Dennis, I really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I know I enjoyed it. I'm sure our listeners will enjoy it, too. Um, don't forget, everybody, we have uh, five shows a week coming up starting this week as the season starts. So um, we will start on Sunday. Well, actually, let me backtrack. Um, Tuesday will be I Got Five on it with Craig. Wednesday will be Score More with Garrett. Thursday will be The Walkthrough. Uh, and Friday, we'll be doing the TLR Roundtable, which is our mailbag show. And, of course, on Sundays, we'll wrap up with After Hours after the game. So be sure to like, follow, subscribe on Twitter, on um, on YouTube, all that good stuff. And thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>